Hey everybody, Ketwalski here checking in with another one of our hashtag Star Trek discussions videos. Today we're going to be talking about a theory in regards to the Borg. And this is going to directly um, address some issues that I think most people like to point out in Star Trek First Contact. Uh, namely the issue with Battle of Sector 001. Uh, so I do want to go ahead and say that this Borg theory has not been proven. But it is widely regarded on the internet and it's something that I do personally believe in. Um, and also also, please note that this is the first video that I'm going to be doing in regards to Star Trek First Contact. I've got about three or four videos planned uh, leading up to my top five worst and best things about Star Trek First Contact. So, anyways, guys and gals, let's go ahead and get right into this. And before we go ahead and start off today's discussion, I do want to go ahead and state that today's video will be including only Alpha Canon sources. I'm not going to be including any Beta Canon stuff from the comics, books, or video games and stuff like that. By assimilating other beings into our collective, we are bringing them closer to perfection. Somehow, I question your motive. So as you guys just heard, the Queen talking to Data in Star Trek First Contact basically says that they're on a mission to assimilate other races and achieve a state of perfection. That's kind of the goal, overall goal of the Borg. Now the theory that we're going to be discussing today basically states why the Borg continuously only sends usually one or two ships after the Federation or really just the Alpha and Beta Quadrant powers um, as opposed to just sending a huge armada of Borg ships in and just wiping everybody out. So the theory is, and it's pretty simple and it actually kind of makes sense, is that the Borg continuously push certain races that they have deemed potentially uh, viable races to be assimilated to the brink of extinction. They kind of constantly force them and through this adversity of almost being destroyed and almost being wiped out, they continue to advance themselves further and further and further both as a species and technologically. So what does that kind of do? That basically forces the race that the, uh, the Borg are attempting to assimilate to be the best versions of themselves and then the Borg come in with way more units wipe out their technology for the most part and their population for the most part and assimilate everything else and thus you know raising the Borg up a little bit towards their ultimate goal of perfection now why does this make sense well it makes sense because of the fact that the Borg do not like to assimilate races that they deem to be inferior they want to continuously input more and more uh, resources into their collective in order to be the better and best versions of themselves so the reason why you know, the Borg only attack with one sphere, or excuse me, one cube at Wolf 359 is to just show the Federation and really all the Alpha and Beta Quadrant powers that they are completely inadequate in order to deal with this Borg threat. They almost get wiped out. And because they're able to push back the Borg threat and actually succeed through, you know, using some crazy, you know, ways of backhandedly using Picard to, you know, attack the collective on the inside. It makes sense that the Borg then sit there and say, okay, so this race is potentially viable for us to assimilate, and it could potentially actually raise us towards our ultimate goal of perfection. So we're going to continue to kind of push this race and kind of press them into being the better versions of themselves, into the better technology versions of themselves, so that when we're ready, we feel like they're ready, we're going to go ahead and assimilate them into the collective. This is the standard MO for the Borg. Now, let's go ahead and look at directly at the front of Star Trek First Contact. They're creating a temporal vortex. Time travel. So we see only another cube again, one cube coming towards Earth. And you may sit there and say to yourself, why are the Borg only sending one cube again? Why are they not just using multiple cubes or a lot of other, you know, resources in order to invade Earth and, you know, assimilate the Federation if that's their ultimate goal? So I do want to touch on a few things right now um, that are kind of happening inside of the Star Trek universe around this film. This takes place in the year 2373. That's when this attack takes place on Earth. That's where Star Trek First Contact is taking place. During this time, we have several things occurring. Number one, Voyager is in the Delta Quadrant, and it's witnessing the 
essentially the Borg getting its ass kicked by Species 8472. So the Borg are taking a lot of heavy losses. Additionally, the Borg Queen and the Delta Quadrant has also just been defeated by Janeway. And the Dominion has been incurring into the Beta Quadrant and is essentially, excuse me, the Alpha Quadrant, and is essentially getting ready to just kick off the Dominion War. Um, so there's a lot of other factors kind of happening here. So it makes sense, in my opinion, why the Borg would just send one cube just to kind of keep the pressure up on the Federation on the back end so that they could, you know, essentially just sit there and say, okay, so we don't have the resources to assimilate Earth yet, but we don't want them to think that we're not still pressing them into some kind of perfectionist state. So we're going to send one more cube over there just in case, you know, so that they understand that we're still... You know, we are the Borg are still a threat to them. I want them to continually uh, improve themselves and get ready for assimilation. So what happens though is Picard shows up to the battle. He utilizes his previous, you know, experience of being assimilated um, as a weapon, as a tool to destroy the Borg cube. Then we see the Queen leave in a Borg sphere and travel back in time. Now, a lot of people like to sit there and say, well, why the hell didn't the Borg just travel back in time before they even arrived on Earth and just assimilate the planet like back in like the 1920s or whatever? That's a great thing, but again, that's not the Borg's MO. They want a race that's technologically at their brink, at their peak of just the best of the best of the best of who they could possibly be, and then they assimilate them. They don't want to assimilate the 1920s, you know, Earth like that's not nobody cares about 1920s Earth. What are they gonna get out of mustard gas abilities and check out our sweet dirigibles? Like they don't give a shit. They want our technology and us being the best versions of ourselves. I do think that when the Queen decides to leave the Borg cube, number one, she's trying to save herself um, for whatever reason. She wanted to go ahead and say, you know what? Fuck this. We're not gonna go ahead and use a standard MO, and we're just gonna attack and assimilate Earth in the past. That's what she's gonna do. That was their plan. I think that they just called an audible actually at the event. I don't think that their initial focus was to do that. And I think it's also possible that their mission changed because of the events that are going on in the Delta Quadrant with Species 8472, that maybe they're sitting there saying, okay, we can't be dealing with the Federation and all the powers inside the Alpha and Beta Quadrants and 8472. So instead of assimilating them and raising us up to perfection, we're going to call an audible. We're just going to send ourselves back in time and we're going to go ahead and just remove this Federation threat as a whole so that we can focus all of our resources in the future on species 8472 um, and then basically have a huge alpha and beta quadrant level of reinforcements against the species 8472 in the year 2373 and why do I say that is because when they're when the enterprise is stuck inside the temporal wake they go ahead and say that there's nine billion population a population of nine billion Borg on earth and we know that the time period that uh, the Enterprise and the Borg Sphere go back to is just after World War III, and it's like six billion people dead or whatever it is, huge numbers, um, and the Earth is not that populated. So that means that the Earth went from a very, very small population at the end of World War III, the uh, Borg stopped first contact and then repopulated Earth, and most likely Alpha and Beta Quadrants have all been assimilated and is now a huge Borg force that could easily crush Species 8472, which is a very, very real threat to the Borg as opposed to any of the other races. So it makes sense that because of the other power plays that are going on inside the different quadrants that the Borg would cause an, call an audible and go ahead and say, you know what, we're going to play a long-term game instead of just trying to do our typical raise them up to the perfection level and then assimilate them. We're going to go back, assimilate everybody before they're even that good, and then we're just going to raise them up ourselves and use our knowledge as future Borg to raise up and get ready for the assault of Species 8472 in the future. So I do know that a lot of people are going to sit there and say, well, you know, why are the Borg? That doesn't make sense. The Borg don't want a species that is unacceptable to their goal of ultimate perfection and yes i agree that that ultimately that's their main focus and i think that's their standard mo but we have seen in the past that the borg once they've decided that a race is ready for assimilation they will go ahead and start adding different borg attachments to children and babies to try and make them more perfect uh heading towards their goal of ultimate perfection and what we'll do is they'll actually add all these different uh, Borg accoutrements to a child or a baby and stick them inside of these incubators that help accelerate their growth process so they become adult Borg drones much, much quicker. So the Borg are used to taking things that are maybe not necessarily 
viable for combat or drone duty immediately and then getting them up to that standard in a relatively short amount of time. So having the board go back in time and deal with a much younger version of Earth and basically kind of forcing the acceleration of that species of Earth, you know, as human beings, their species of, of advancement and evolution and things like that. It's not something that they're completely foreign with, but it's not something that the Borg usually do. Like I said, it's not their standard MO, and it's not what they are used to enjoying doing, which is just simply waiting for the race to fucking figure it out themselves. So just to go ahead and recap, I know I threw a lot of information out at you guys. The Borg theory basically states that the Borg are attempting to press any kind of species that they deem potentially good for the collective into the ultimate perfect versions of themselves. They want to continue to push them towards evolving both as an individual species and technologically. And then once the Borg say, okay, you've reached the point that we don't think that you guys can go too far um, without causing a huge threat to us. So we're going to go ahead and try and assimilate you and make you part of the collective and raise ourselves up and then move on and go to the next race. That's the Borg theory. That's why I also think that in Star Trek First Contact, they only were sending one cube there. They were just continuing the, the same MO of just pressing the Federation and the Alpha and Beta Quadrant powers into continuing to improve themselves and, and empowering them to evolve both technologically and evolutionary. And I feel as though because of all the stuff happening in the Delta Quadrant and around all those different areas, I think that the Borg Queen that was at present at the battle of Sector 001 decided to call an audible and just go back in time and essentially solidify their hold over the Alpha and Beta Quadrants in preparation for the eventual war with Species 8472 in the future. So that's what I think happened and that's why I view that the, you know, one Borg cube thing makes sense to me. That's why I, I agree with it and actually makes sense um, and why they don't just simply wipe out the Federation and why they didn't do that back in the TNG series, you know, why they didn't just send a bunch of stuff because that's not their goal. They don't just want to wipe things out. They want to assimilate the best versions of everything so that they become more and more perfect. Anyways, guys and gals, that concludes today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you found it interesting, please throw a like and a subscribe up on YouTube, and then go ahead and throw a comment down below and tell me what you think about the Borg theory. Do you think this is right, or do you think this is just sloppy bullshit writing and that, uh, you know, the Borg are just OP and, the, you know, the writers just never really wanted to use them uh, to their full extent because then that would just destroy everybody in the universe. So I'm curious to hear what you guys and gals think about it. Uh, please follow me on Twitter at RealKatWalski and follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash realcatwalski and I will see all of you guys next time. Live long and prosper my trekkies! <laughs>